Last season, the Browns won their first game at Heinz Field in 16 years. Can Cleveland go back to back with another win in Pittsburgh? We'll find out next on EA Sports. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And CD, you look at our featured team here. They know coming in, they've got to be at their best because they're facing one of the better overall defenses in the NFL. And this is not one of the better offenses around in terms of running the football. So they understand that they're going to be put to the test a bit. The big plays in the run game, they haven't been there of late. So maybe that means we'll see them shake things up a little bit. Some RPOs, some touch passes, some draw plays, anything to try and gain a little bit of momentum. Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Cleveland offense, and here's Baker Mayfield, former Heisman Trophy winner, ready to go at quarterback. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense, and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. A first down throw for Mayfield. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big play that time on the catch and run. We know play callers can be very creative in this game today, but sometimes when they've got receivers with speed like this, they don't need to design incredibly complex calls. Sometimes it's just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. In a sense, less can become more. And it was right there. There on the tackle, Mika Fitzpatrick. Second and ten. A very chilly day here, but no snow. And I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. On third down, Mayfield. Swings this out for Hunt. Gets through, and now an opening. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. Over the middle, complete. That's Hunt. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. This is a crew. They've come out flat their last two games, both losses. But just judging by the energy level, they look different here early, and that touchdown shows how. Yeah, it seems to me that that touchdown gets them off the treadmill. Because, you know, you, you've been on the treadmill. I've seen you work out. You go forever <laughs> and ever, and it tells you've gone somewhere. But you really have. You're in the same spot. They've exchanged it for an escalator. Still got some hills to climb, but they can get there. These are good analogies. I run outside sometimes, though. You know, get, get some fresh air, a little sun on your face. A little, a little wind in there. Yeah, that's right. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. 
Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Steelers set to go on offense, and it is the big man, Big Ben, number seven, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to lead them. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an and interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. A look at the numbers for Harris in last week's game. North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what. He understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And he is caught by Smith-Schuster. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Well, Brandon, obviously no panic in them. They gave up the touchdown, and yeah, their defensive side did that. But he's already taken them back downfield. I love this field general that they've got. It's almost like he went to the defensive captain and said, oh. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris, touchdown number 18 on the year. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. It certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Five plays there on that drive. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Browns offense heading out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And with a final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. Hey, you're impressed, aren't you? I am impressed. It means two weeks, if I'm not That's mistaken. Nice. Right? That is. But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, Maybe that importance gets quadruple, and that's where we are right now to see who can make this last run, the last push to get into the playoffs. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Ray Ray McLeod deep for Pittsburgh. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. The 41-yard punt, nine on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. 
Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Too far downfield, something those linemen have to watch out for, and that time it costs them. On third down, Roethlisberger. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. On the give, this is Harris. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Well, these two teams, you might recall, met back in mid-season, week eight to be exact. And it was the visiting Steelers who came away victorious, so they'll look to claim the season series with a win here in Pittsburgh. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. On second down, it's Harris. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. 44 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Here's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Johnson. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. Now Roethlisberger. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Browns. And he'll bring this all the way up to the 45-yard line. Well, give some credit to the defense. They forced the big play, knocked the ball free from him, but this a cardinal sin by the quarterback. Know where you are on the field, and he just gave up at a minimum three points. And instead of getting down, takes the contact. The turnover ensues. The football going back. Over now to the Cleveland Browns. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so someone well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, it comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up the first down. Let's go! A game of 16 
We didn't need to ask around. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Come on, baby, let's go. Get back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. Oh, they were in a great position to take the lead, Charles. Obviously, all they needed was a field goal to do that. They wanted the touchdown. Unfortunately, they're going to get neither. And you know every offense talks about the same thing each week, don't they, Brandon? They want to end every drive with a kick, whether it's a field goal attempt, a point after the touchdown, or worst, a punt. This time they had that opportunity but didn't get it because you know the field shrinks that close to the end zone and that allows a defense to tighten up their coverage and they picked that one off. And they were backed up to start the drive but not anymore. Now that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head. You saw the end result. He wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield and that's what they did and they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll get started up at FedEx Field in our nation's capital, where you see the final score there. Golden Tate, a touchdown catch in the victory. Next, we head off to check out another game. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Houston Texans. Brandon Cooks, a touchdown catch in the victory. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Title Town, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Minnesota Vikings. Aaron Rodgers, excellent in the W, as his guys get victory number 12 on the year. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Browns. And in a tie ball game, they've got to be asking themselves, what can we do to get this passing game on track for the second half to come? And meanwhile, for the Steelers, we get a look at their numbers on the ground in that first half as they'll be looking to rev things up here in a tie ball game. These two teams making their last-minute adjustments. The second half coming your way from Pittsburgh. And to bring it to you, we go back to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It was Jadavian Clowney who got upfield for the stop. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Roethlisberger completing it to the right side. Johnson. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. Short little throw to Ebron. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. 
A rifles one, that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah Yusu Cormier. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. Bailey now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Back to the air, Roethlisberger after the pick six. Flush to his right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Working with second and five now. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now Roethlisberger. Throw left side, taken in by Claypool. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A little football one-on-one -on -one there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 65 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Now a first down carry for Harris. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Third quarter action here in this regular season finale. This will be second and ten to throw here, Roethlisberger. It's brought in by Harris. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. So eight yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up a third and one. Now it's Roethlisberger. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jeremiah Orosu And the Browns are going to take over at their own 13-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I'm doing right there with me. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back now in Pittsburgh. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. A run for Nick Chubb. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Throwing Mayfield. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. That catch good for five. It's third down.
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. He completes it to Beckham. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Ben's throw complete there to Johnson. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 34-yard line. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Throw left side complete. That's Johnson. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays. Harder to move it. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And they're knocking on the door. Second and goal now in a one-score game. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Ben going to throw. Open man is Johnson. Touchdown, Steelers. Deontay Johnson, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. That's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Come on. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. He always hit. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. T.J. Watt. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Boy, that's tough, Charles. First play of the drive, you're hoping to stay ahead of schedule. You take that huge sack, and now you're facing second and a mile. And the entire time, you were probably thinking the same thing I was. Either get rid of the ball safely, of course, or... And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. 
Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. A give. This is Chubb. But that won't do much good as he is tackled at his own seven. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. Here's Jamie Gillendale. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They can still get into field goal range, partner. They got to work quickly, though. I agree with you totally. Find a way to get the ball downfield and out of bounds. In a perfect world, they know what hash they want to get to for their kicker, and they already know the distance that he feels comfortable. That'll dictate what they do on offense. See if they can get in his range. Roethlisberger's throw complete to Fryer Muth. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Now Ben. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And the Browns are going to get the football back at their own 17. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Handoff comes to Chubb. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Four quarters, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. McLeod now on the return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Let's go, Let's go. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. He's got the first down here inside the 30, and he gets this one down to the 24. And you definitely could make the case we might not even be in overtime had he not thrown three interceptions in regulation. But looking better here so far in OT. Yeah, and when you think about what a coach is thinking at that point, because normally you've thrown three picks during the game, you might craft your play call to be a little more careful. Not in this case. The green light still on for him. Again, it's Harris on second down. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold him. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Open man, Smith Schuster, it's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 
He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. So the game winning touchdown came through the air in overtime. Four quarters wasn't enough. We were treated to a really good one, Parker. That we were. And I just love being able to be witness to a game like this all the way through. Who's going to win it? Oh, what? We're getting overtime? Great for us. A lot of tension on the field. Very tough. Not a surprise it ended with a passing touchdown. That's the way we play in the NFL. But the execution was pretty darn good. So for Pittsburgh, they continue to show their playoff ready as they move to 13-3 and with one game remaining. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Steelers, they run their record to 13-3 now on the year. 